there's a common view uh, that corruption is exclusively a problem in developing or third world countries. So we might say it's not a problem in New Zealand because we're not Russia, which is hardly a third world country, but you know what I mean. We're not Afghanistan. Um, it's clearly not true. I mean, corruption is not simply a malaise of the third world, but it is culturally conditioned. It certainly, it is not a, it is not a problem only of the third world. Uh, Cliff Garagat, he says, uh, corruption is like AIDS. It doesn't distinguish uh, gender, age, social status, ideology. Some people say, no, this happens because uh, these people is from the left or these people is from the right. Corruption doesn't make that, those titles distinguish. And if you see the big scandals of corruption around the world, you will find that most of them have actors from the first world there or the first world receiving the consequences and the proceeds of corruption. And uh, look at Spain, look at the United States. Well, Trump is there. I mean, uh, if we want to talk of corruption, we can talk a lot about Trump. But we have had huge scandals in the United States, Siemens in Germany, uh, Norway and Denmark that usually appear as very clean countries. They have their scandals related to uh, communications companies and, and MERSC, for example, in the case of Denmark. And here you have had uh, this interesting case of the Auckland Transport Agency and this obscure trust that has been uh, uh, targeted here in New Zealand to mobilize the money of the Malaysian, and that's a huge scandal of corruption. We are talking about five billion New Zealand dollars mobilized from a public fund of Malaysia, the, the one MDB. So uh, this, is a, this is a world and a global problem. Nobody can say they are safe in these times of the impact of corruption because if you come from a third world country or from a developed country and a powerful country, all of them, all countries have a share of this problem. 